Hello and welcome Pixels! Today I want to introduce my personal basics for starting 2D animation with Grease Pencil in Blender 2.82. If you miss anything, it would be great to tell me this by writing a comment. I have tried to do this video in 2.83 Beta and 2.9 Alpha, but these versions are not stable and some features doesn't work like masks or effects. I'm sure this will work in the upcoming versions as well, but not in state of this date, 14th May 2020. I want to bring to mind that this is not a video tutorial about the principles of animation. The focus is on technical side for Blender 2.82 and the tools to create animation. Here's a little overview for the topics of this tutorial and timestamps are in the description below. Let's jump into the first topic. First of all, some basics for beginners. An animation is time dependent. A video file can be rendered if you add a camera with a specific canvas. Every video is separated into many single images, which is called frame. If you play those images very fast, your eyes get bluffed and you get an illusion of movement. The lowest rate of images to create an illusion of movement is 24 frames per second. In short, FPS. All that is more than 24th FPS feels better and many games prefer to play with 60 FPS. But I think this is a matter of taste and for animation a matter of time and effort. In Blender you can check your settings for the FPS value in Property Shelf, Output Properties, Dimensions, Frame Rate. I have currently 24 FPS but you are free to change this to any other value. In my Basics of Interface video tutorial, I presented you where you can find the Dopesheet workspace but didn't talk much about it because I will do this now. And directly underneath the Dopesheet workspace is the Timeline workspace, which you need as well for animation. The Dopesheet records and marks every single action in your scene along a time axis, which is defined into frames. It ends at 250 frames by default but you can adjust this value in the timeline panel here. The blue marker tells you at which frame you are currently working. Those little rhombus signals that there is already a saved information for frame 1. Track and drop the highlighted number to a different position if you want to check other frames for your animation. I will deepen frames in my next chapters. On the left side of the dope sheet is a brown and blue highlighted category Summary and Stroke, which can be minimized or expand. There are already two subcategories in the stroke line, Lines and Fills. Those two lines are the layers for your Grace Pencil object. It is very important to understand the hierarchy and connections for animation. All brush strokes and fills belong to layers, which can be found in property shelf here. There you can add or remove layers. Those layers are listed in the dope sheet panel as well here. When you add a new layer, now this will affect the dope sheet list as well. Currently all layers are sorted to stroke category, which is actually your object in the outliner. If you expand this crease pencil object and rename it, then you see that this is affecting the dope sheet category as well. In summary, we have one object in the outliner which contain layers, and those layers contains our brush strokes and fills. For changing active frame position, click on a specific position of your frame line in dope sheet workspace. Jump one frame ahead with the left and right arrow key. If you want to play your animation in actual speed, then click the play button in the timeline workspace or press shift plus space buff for starting or stopping. The current number of frames are set by default as your display in dope sheet. You can define start and end frame in the timeline here and this expands the dope sheet frame line. Use the slider for navigation or use the middle mouse button by drag and drop inside the frame line in dope sheet. There's as well an opportunity for zoom in within the frame display by press Ctrl plus keep middle mouse button pressed plus pull the cursor to a specific direction. Right direction is zoom in and left direction is zoom out.
Creating a frame is pretty simple for drawing. Just set a brush stroke and you get a mark on your current frame position within the selected layer line. I know 4 ways how to create new frames. A. Set the marker on the new frame and draw a stroke. B. Go to edit mode, select everything which should be brought to your new frame. Move the marker on your wanted frame and press Shift plus D in your view panel for duplicate. Set your selection to your wanted position. Keep in mind that you created a duplicate and your structure is two times in your frame now. Maybe you have to delete the old structure for your needs. C. Select the marker symbol of a specific layer or select more with a box selection. Press Shift plus D in Dope Sheet and move those drawing structures to a new position. Enter your position with a left click. You are able to select a whole keyframe by clicking on the marker in Summary category. D. Go to Edit mode, select everything which should be brought to your new frame, move the marker on your wanted frame and press the G key for the Move command. Just for information. To select stroke points, there are two selection modes which are very helpful for me. Select only points and select all points of a stroke. In first mode you can select a specific part of a stroke by box selection and select the whole stroke by pressing L key for all linked points. The second mode just selects the whole stroke. I think the second mode is much faster and simple to understand. Well, drawing a frame is permanent for all following frames, till you tell Blender that there should be something different now. If I place a stroke on frame 20 now, and there is no frame in front and behind it, then this drawing is permanent for the whole clip. When I go to frame 10 next and draw something else there, then this frame will overwrite everything before the first frame, till the first frame starts. You tell Blender, this figure looks like this now, and next it looks like this, and next it looks like this, and so on. The more frames you are adding, the more movement the figure gets. If one frame feels not good in time, then you are able to grab it and pull it somewhere else. If there is an object which you don't need before or afterwards a specific frame, then create a new frame at this position and delete it. If you just delete it, then Blender don't create a keyframe for this. You have the opportunity to draw something on first frame and don't change anything till the end of this clip. Then this will be a static object like a background or something like this. So what is onion skinning? This tool should help you to draw in betweens and show the previous and next frame with less opacity. It is easier to calculate movement and position of your current frame. Layers are very useful to organize your drawing or animation. For example, creating a layer for your sketch and another one for your outlines. If you finished your outline drawing, then disable the sketching layer. Very cool in Blender is that the layers are interacting with each other. If you want to fill your outlines now, you can do this by creating a layer underneath the outline layer and create a new face with fill material. It is as well possible to select the fill tool and just click inside your outline with the wanted material activated. But this is only working if you have closed outlines. If they are not closed for any reason, for example a stylistic reason, then you should add some further stroke to close the form, fill it and remove the helping lines afterwards.
Masks can be a very nice opportunity if you want to add shadows or highlights to your drawing in a very fast way. Starting position is a layer with outlines and a layer with fills. Create a new layer which is above the filling layer. In the layer management overview you have several options. Lock, visibility, onion skinning and mask layer. By enabling mask layer you interact with the layer below and use only those surfaces. Just a quick information. Filling outlines can be buggy if there is a mask in a previous frame. Disable the mask layer or create a new shape for this frame. As I mentioned it before, the frame is permanent till you order it to be different. Visual effects can be added to an object as a whole. It is not possible to add effects to just one layer. Probably there may be cool effects for your drawing. For example a rim light or a trap shadow. We are able to zoom in and out in 3D viewport. The canvas size is based on the output setting in the output property tab. If you want to add a background to your scene which is static, you have several options. First option is to drag and drop an image from a folder to your scene. If the image is not the same ratio than the canvas setting, then the image will be stretched to fit. But you will not find this image in the outliner. Currently we are still in 3D viewport, but with the zero key on number pad you enter the camera view. This camera is able to load a background image. Select this camera in the outliner and enter the object data property tab. There you find the background function, which can be enabled or disabled. Expand the settings to remove the image or load a new one. Another option is to create a new image. Select background and place your image to your wanted location. This image can be scaled, rotated or moved as well, which can't the background image of the camera. This image can be animated as well if you want to. You may be recognized that there is a hard cut each time a new frame is entered by the timeline marker if you have drawn just a bunch of frames so far. Sometimes there is no need to create a special animation because you need a simple movement for this particular object. It is possible to interpolate frames which drawing structure is pretty similar or in best case the same. This tool is not advisable for complex shapes. I present you two different ways for interpolation. First, you have to be in draw mode, select which kind of layer you want to interpolate. It is not possible to interpolate all layers at the same time. Bring the active frame marker to the frame where you want to add a new frame. Click on draw button here and now you have two options, interpolate and sequence. Click on interpolate for a single interpolation frame. Once clicked you can adjust the interpolation level. This depends on the movement speed of your object and frame position between the two frames. Left click for enter your interpolation level. Sequence is a little bit different. This function will automatically interpolate every single frame between your existing frames. The movement for interpolation will be constant. Second method works in edit mode. Best result is when both frames are the same stroke. Maybe just in a different position or size. Then hit the interpolate button. Here you have as well the option for interpolate and sequence, which works same as I mentioned in method 1. But now you have more option. Interpolate all layers and interpolate selected strokes. 
This really depends on your needs. Sculpt mode helps you to adjust brush strokes or fills. You can smooth strokes as well here. By interpolating frames or creating new frames, they may change volumes of your object or character. It is possible to just fill your new space again, or duplicate the previous fill frame and sculpt the form till it fits. My last point on this list is a question for yourself. What are you animating? The grease pencil strokes or your object? Basically the origin was always on 0, 0, 0 position till now and we just animated the strokes itself. Which belongs to the layers and which belongs to the outliner grease pencil object? In Dopesheet workspace menu you are currently in grease pencil mode. Feel free to switch to Dope Sheet, which is animating the object itself or the origin. If you have drawn a walk cycle of a character based on zero position, then you are able to give it distance now. You can combine your drawn animation with crease pencil and animation with object mode. That's all so far. This was again a very long tutorial, but I think it's not possible to trim it. Thank you very much for watching. It would be very nice to give this video a like and or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more game dev videos. Cheers!